Welcome to the Monday, April the 1st, April Fool's Day <laughs> meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Hannah Smith. Liz Pritchett. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Eric Gilbertson. Seth Mitchell. Benjamin Cheney. For anybody who has not been here before, we are an advisory committee to the Development and Review Board. We will listen to the applications and move them forward to the next meeting of the Development and Review Board. And do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor of the agenda tonight, raise your hand. Unless anybody has any other comments, we will go to the first application for 148 State Street. You want to come forward and have a seat and bring your materials. Um, I'm Katrina the Labrier, um, the Professional Development Director at the Vermont Association of Realtors. And as our application proposes, there's no new construction, alteration, renovations, or repairs other than what may happen when we start painting the building. Um, our current color right now is white. The shutters are actually a green and in desperate need of a paint job. The color on the back page, which was originally submitted, isn't really the color that we were expecting. Um, we were thinking of a realtor blue, but this is just way too bright, in my opinion. So we came up with a, another color, which would be this color here. Um, we have wood trim on the building now. We're not planning to replace with vinyl. We're going to actually still paint the wood that's there. Um, but this is the color with an existing white trim we're going to keep. And it, again, it's not this bright white. It's more of a, an off-white color. So I wouldn't even refer to this photo at all. Um, but eventually, um, phase two, I think, would be um, to redo the roof to a black shingle. So um, right now it's green, and I know that's not in the budget currently, but to paint the building this color and then a black shingle on the roof later. Any consideration for getting rid of the shutters? There is a very big consideration for that. I would, I would advocate for that. Yeah, I think what we're trying to do is make this building look more um, up to date um, without losing any historical value. So yes, I think the shutters would definitely be we're not going to keep those shutters, so being that they're green and adding new shutters, I don't think is a, an option at this point. So. Are the ones that are there wooden shutters, or are they vinyl? No, they're a vinyl. They're cracking. They're faded. Okay. Um, so once we paint the building, I don't think we'll have any use for those shutters or any desire to purchase new ones. So. Plus, you have a variety of windows that don't even have them, and yeah. the ones that they're on, it doesn't make any sense. Right. <laughs> yeah. This was a renovated home to an office, so we're slowly changing things as we go. But mm -hmm. yeah. What's the siding on the building now? It's wood. Wood, and you're going to, you just brought that for a color sample. Correct. We're not planning to replace with any vinyl. We're just going to use the color. Good. Yeah. Do you know what that color is? Does it have a name? We don't. We're actually going to take this color to a paint shop and ask them to computerly match yes. the color. Okay. We saw a building with the color we wanted, and couldn't get any matches so we found this that matched similar to that building so it was one of those we saw it we liked it what is it and we couldn't find it so this is what we matched it to and you're not intending to paint any of the trim any other I, I mean I guess I'm thinking of here sort of no. it's all gonna be that's all color. gonna stay the well not stay white but it'll remain an off whitish color in contrast to this but we're not going to change it to this color blue so you're just painting the clabberts, basically? That's blue. right, yep. Yeah. Everything else will be left. Yeah, we'll, call, we'll paint it over, but it'll be similar to the color that it is, a white or off-white. You don't have an actual sample of my color, do you? That one? Mm -hmm. No, that would be the sample. <laughs> you have a smartphone? You want to take a I, picture actually, of it I and can. print it and yeah. add it to the file? Uh, and then you that. can 
It is painted. Yeah. Yes, that'll be that'll be probably painted the, the same pile. color as the trim. I'm going to put it on a white, like an off-white color. Yeah. We have mulch there, and it gets dirty, so we'll have to just paint it anyway. Well, we could do that too. Yeah, that's a suggestion that would satisfy Hillier to do that. I understand why, I mean, with the gray too, that would be blue. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the railing or staining that? It's natural, um, yeah. We may put a sealer on it, uh -huh. but we're leaving it natural. And there's the same matching <coughs> on the far side of the conference room, so <laughs> it does match that mm -hmm. side. <laughs> what color are the shingles that are on the building now? Green. Green. Any idea of what your time frame is for replacing those? For the sh the shutters? No, no. Or the, you said just at some point you're going to need to replace the shingles. The roof shingles. Oh, the roof shingles. <coughs> the roof shingles. I'm sorry, I thought you said the shutters. Um, no, it won't be this year that we can do that. I assume it will be next year in the spring. That would be phase two. Does anybody have any issues with if she wants to throw that in, you don't have to come back to replace that would be them with great. black shingles? Because sure. that gives you a two year window. Okay. With actually, maybe for a year extension, if you actually. Okay. If that would work for us, sure. considered a historic district, the State Street that we're on, or? I can't, I can't remember, remember if that's in the district either. It probably is. Yeah, I think it probably is. I don't know whether it's a contributing structure or not. D E L A B R U V -E R E. And the L and the V are both capital. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or suggestions regarding the shingles? If they want to replace them with a black shingle, it's fine. Okay. And I'll read through the criteria, unless you have any other questions. I don't, no. <clears throat> criteria number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of any proposed landscaping, none proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change in utilities, li outside lighting or anything. No. Okay. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. And then in the comments below, I said that the you had mentioned, the applicant mentioned that rough shingles will need to be replaced soon. The faded green asphalt shingles may be replaced with black asphalt shingles of the same style or an architectural equivalent. By the way, there's a great certainty shingle that has a lifetime warranty that's not very expensive and they make it a nice black, which is very reasonable Good to at know. some point when you get there. 
and I said you propose that you have the option of removing the shutters, and then you presented a softer blue color on a piece of vinyl siding, which you prefer to use instead of the originally proposed color, and then we have a smartphone picture to get into the file. Any other questions, comments? Do I hear a motion to approve? So Second. Moved. All in favor of the application? Thank you. It looks so much better. <laughs> and I'll get you to sign that in the lower left above my name. Okay. <laughs> Very much. Okay, thank you. Good luck project. Okay, it's a nice color. It is nice. It's, it's a more of a Williamsburg blue, blue yeah. that they frequently call yeah. that. This was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad so you uh, thought that way. We all are. <laughs> Next application is for the Langdon Street Bridge, USGS. Hey, thanks. And introduce yourselves. Sure. Yeah, I'm Jamie Shanley. Okay. And I'm Greg Walsh. W A L S H. That's correct. And we both work for the US Geological Survey. We're, our office is in the post office building. Okay. Um, and we were here November of 2017, I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to move this a little quicker now, if you're blessing. Um, we kind of, in the interim, finalized our design and pretty set with what we want to do now. So I'll just run through it pretty quickly. I don't know if you've all seen a lot of sketch. Is it that, I believe? Yeah, we have. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. There's a small copy. Thank you for bringing the full size. Poster, yeah, this will be the full size poster that's displayed on the pole. Okay. Oh, sorry. You know what you want? You need to put full size everybody's. But do you not actually have that? I don't have anything. That's okay. That's okay. You can hang on to that. Sorry. And, uh, I have sketches here, but I thought it might be useful to kind of show a photo of where it's going to be or where we'd like to put it. And, and really, the whole display is a, is a pole with things mounted on it. To chronicle the history of flooding in Montpelier. And I want to say that the fire department has kind of worked with us a little bit on this and, and is supportive uh, because the city <coughs> is funding a, a gauge on the North Ramp right at the Langdon Street Bridge where the water level is uh, on a website and the city does monitor that and you know, with impending flooding. And so there are the uh, Part of this, and we kind of jointly got the idea it would be neat to have a little exhibit. And the gentleman on the in the photo there, Greg Hilgendorf, was one of our stream teachers <coughs> who passed away a few years ago, and we just wanted to sort of fold this into a memorial. For him. Um, so the pole would be mounted on the post office side of the bridge to the abutment here, just a few feet off the railing of the bridge. and. If you are familiar with that set, there are these two little sort of steel oh, yeah. remains of something that stick out. And I thought the pole would go nicely right up in between those. Sort of, sort of marks the spot where we thought it would be good. And there's a little ledge down at the bottom that the pole could rest on. But of course, it would be securely bolted. And Audrey said, well, how are you going to fasten it? So our guys came up with <laughs> what they usually use to fasten poles to concrete. It'll be it'll be rugged. No worries there, I don't think. Are, are you gonna put the city's website, the right website citation on there so people could go on their smartphones and see the water level? Uh -huh. oh. oh that's the yeah. scan code, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. That you will be able to do that. You can access the site. Okay. Stream engaging okay. site from the, from the code that's on the poster. That's great. And so the pole will be quite high because we've got to get up to that 1927 flood level. 
Um, so that was, what, like 11 feet off the, the road deck or so. Um, and we will uh, mark the floods with these uh, four inch by 10 inch little cracks that will have the, the date on it. It'll just have the year, but the ex exact date is, is on the poster. And the exact elevation is on the poster as well. Um, and so what you'll see when you look at the pole is here in this left drawing of the flag up high for the 27th flood, a flag that's sort of intermediate of the, the bridge railing, which was the ice dam flood of 1992. And then two other floods will actually be below deck level. So that those will be one-sided because they'll be up against the concrete. That's the, the two floods in 2011. Um, the, um, let me say, the, the, the upper ones that are above the road level will be two-sided so people can see in both directions. Is there any record around of any earlier floods in 27? With any accuracy at all? Uh, I don't think we have accurate levels. I, I know not, not accurate enough for the USGS to put its stamp on it. Uh, What's their taller? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty tight. <laughs> it's pretty tight. Uh, I, 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 after the uh, floods, I don't remember what year they're in. They flooded all over the state, not in Montpelier, but I worked with an archaeologist that kind of studied, studied flooding. Uh, and, you know, his, his maintaining that most of the landscape changes were done by events like the 27 flood rather than the slow change that goes that came with rather catastrophic mm -hmm. events. Uh, so that's why I was asking. Yeah. Were you, were you looking at a flood that you thought was earlier than 27? He was the archaeologist? No, it, he was just looking for changes in the landscape mm -hmm. for uh, looking for archaeological resources because mm -hmm. obviously a flood takes them takes whatever is buried away. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, okay, that's just a question. But it was interesting that, 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 that Vermont has a history going way back of these kind of catastrophic floods mm -hmm. uh, that hit the one, one, I can't remember what year it was, it hit Waitsfield and Warren pretty hard. Uh, uh, it's a town up in northern Vermont that uh, really got Okay. Okay. I go on. <coughs> yeah, what's well, sort of this tension between the wanting to site your mill on the river and yeah. put your yeah. down there and you're right in the floodplain. But Vermont's not the only place that happens. So I really like this idea. I think I want to point out a couple things. Yeah. Um, you've got a call out for three by three square steel? Yeah. Is it um, or is it well, so that is one thing that we are thinking of changing actually to a okay. round hole. How does that align with your bracket? Because your bracket doesn't seem to be geared for that. Exactly. Yeah. Because right. we're, we're thinking now of a round aluminum pole. Okay. Right. And no chance of any rust. Right. Is that going to be a steel bracket then, though? Oh, that's a good question. I think the bracket is aluminum. Um, it should be. I have to, I have to check that. Uh, you just don't want to have steel in the Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, our, our guys are well aware of that, so I'm sure they... And then I think that the detail with the PT blocking, I think that could be probably better. Is there any other way to do that? Uh, the PT... Yeah, you get pressure-treated blocks and hang it to concrete. It'd be nice to do that a little differently. Oh, okay. Um, sure, we're open to suggestion. What, what do you think? I guess, I mean, okay. do you really need it? Could you, well, have, that's could you have plate basically directly to it and then to the bracket? And if you needed to pat it off, whether you patted it off with a piece of wood or something. Right. Other than other piece of PT. Similar metal block that, again, won't rust, won't rot, won't, you know, mm -hmm. you never have to really deal with it. Mm -hmm. 
use stainless steel fasteners into the concrete too. It might be possible to just actually mount the pole directly to the concrete depending on yeah. how mm -hmm. plumb it is. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes less is more. <coughs> right. I mean, the, the folks who do this at the USGS are, they <coughs> manage and maintain these gauges all over Vermont and Hampshire, all over the country. And they're pretty savvy with, with mounting uh, equipment to the bridges. In fact, the black pipe, you probably can't see it on the little photograph. The little black hose that goes down here, which is almost unnoticeable, is it, for the gauge that's actually right there in the parking lot. So uh, there is equipment that's there already that most people don't know, notice. But of course, this will be sticking up on the concrete. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we can certainly uh, address the the use or lack of thereof for the pressure treated wood. Yeah. And then I guess the last thing is, um, how are the signs attached physically? There's a, uh, there are going to be a series of uh, brackets that are similar to that, that that we don't have yet right now. <coughs> We've been in communication with the printers of the sign who work for the Lake Champlain Basin Program, and they uh, install signs like this all up and down the, the Champlain Valley. And we're essentially relying on their recommendation for the brackets for mounting the, the signs that they will print. So it's probably going to be some sort of clamp that might look similar to that that's going to go around the pole and attach directly to the sign, similar to a street sign. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. But it, it'll probably have the same look, uh, either an aluminum or something like that, probably an aluminum bracket, but mm -hmm. I don't know the actual bracket right now. Okay. So I just made a note here that it was an adjustment that the uh, PT blocks, uh, the standoffs instead of PT blocks would be either aluminum or stainless or something other than the pressure treated. Yep. Any other questions, comments, suggestions? I think it looks really nice. It's a nice, nice um, panel that you have. You have something? <laughs> I do. I'm just a little concerned about the brackets holding the signs up and just trying to keep that as clean as possible so it's not like kind of a little ding ding. It would be nice if, were, if it, they could be <laughs> welded so that there was like flags. But that does take it to another level. But just when you see clamps and bolts sticking out and then you're probably going to get, I don't know, it just looks like a much cleaner thing when you don't have all these clean little brackets. And I was wondering about the brackets that were also going to hold this sign and mm -hmm. that all could somehow just be one column that had at all its elevations mm -hmm. and things welded to that column. But it might be more than mm -hmm. We could look into that. Um, like I said, we don't have the. We were waiting for this to be approved. It had to be approved yep. by the USGS. And once we get that approval, we can submit the application. And then we wanted to come here before we worked closely with the uh, the sign manufacturer. To say we've got the green light. We're going to go ahead and, and make the signs before we went ahead and figured out what the actual brackets were going to be. Yep. Um, but based on what we've seen from other signs that have been put up by the Lake Champlain Basin Program, there you, often those are on four by four posts, mm -hmm. and then they have a metal bracket that goes all the way around the sign, but we're not going to have a four by four post. It's going to be a freestanding, um, like a street sign, kind of thing, with uh, yeah, the brackets that come off of that. So. Your bracket that you have. Oh, yeah, sure. And that would sort of be attachment of the... A pole. Pole. Pole, right. to, pole to the yeah. uh, pole concrete, to the concrete apartment, yes. Yeah. And so depending on how things go, it's, you just have like bolts that stick out and little wings that stick out. That, it, that can be eliminated. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a great suggestion. Yeah. It just makes yeah. those signs read much. Yeah. yeah. And fewer potential rest surfaces. Or and people screw around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Um, so, I mean, these are the, it's like a composite that will be printed on it. Here at last, 
10 to 15 years. So I, I envision we'd have the, the frame that you can remove it from and place it. Um, yeah. It does start to fade a little bit. But, uh, yeah, if that were well, then I think it's set. I think it would be, yeah. Yeah, well, we can sh we can fish for that. Is there a long-term maintenance plan of this? Long-term maintenance? Um, just, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on it for sure. Um, I don't think we have a formal plan, but we do want to keep this for a long time and replace it as, as needed. You know, it would just be a matter of getting it reprinted. Because, I mean, you've got a monitoring station right there anyway, so that probably has to get visited on a periodic basis, Correct. right? Correct, it is, yes. So you'll be right coming there to see the spot already? Right. Can, can you read the monitoring station now from on site or is it all? Not on site. No, you have to go online. Uh, it's All it is is a stainless steel box mm -hmm. about the size of a cooler mm -hmm. that sits above the guardrail. And apparently there are, uh, our hydrologists are also in the process of replacing that box to make it a slightly smaller one. And it will have a little sign on it, right, that will have uh, <coughs> some more information about it. Right now it's just a sticker that says property of the U.S. Geological Survey stream gauging site. There's not any other information. It's too bad you can't run a wire up to a gauge on the pole. Just to have a little... Um, Just have a little readout of yeah. what, the, what the water level is now. You'd have to access it through through here. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's the way they most of them go now. Because most of these sites are not in an area frequented by a lot of people usually. Yeah. They're on the side of a river, off in the forest, or something like that, and most people don't see them, and so we usually don't have that sort of information. We do have a site at the uh, at the Echo Center on Lake Champlain um, that's got a little window that you can see and look at some stuff, but that's a much higher end piece of equipment. It's also electronically tied to some information that's inside the museum, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's this is a actually a very simple version of most of the gauges that we operate and it was set up with the city to monitor flooding especially during ice jam events working with the fire station so someone could periodically just go to a website and see what the river was doing at any time of day the information is updated every 15 minutes on the website but there's nothing at the site that you can actually read to see what the level of the water is. Nice. Rivers. You can just well, look down over the bridge and see. Well, yeah. it's, it's high. It's low. See, but the uh, the site is so easy. I actually, I have an icon on my phone. All I have to do is touch it, and it pops up instantly. Yeah. And it gives me because my office is on the north branch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I have some stuff stored down in the basement. And yeah. it's, so you're you're. You until made... I can wake up at two a.m. when worrying about flooding, and I can look and tell if I'm in trouble or not. I don't have to go anywhere. To, yeah. I can look at that while you're laying in bed in the middle of the night. It's pretty <laughs> handy. It's very handy. It's very handy. But you're maybe familiar on the upstream side of the bridge. Uh, there, there is marks on the stone. Of, um, the, where it's historically used to monitor the well. And, and at some point, our guys do want to put up a, 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 we call it a staff gauge, that you can read the actual. Mm -hmm. Level, it, it just looks like a ruler essentially, yeah. Yeah. and it'll yeah. have numbers on it, and you'll be able to see what the height is there. And right now, if you're standing, say, uh, on the north side of the bridge, you can see some faded white marks on the stones. And but aside from that, you can't really see much mm -hmm. in terms of the elevation if you're really interested. When they do the aluminum pole, is it possible to have? marks on the pole every foot or so. That That's, I, that was the original plan. I don't, I don't know if it actually made it onto the I mean, It could be or. very simple, just a, you know, a thin black line with a, you know, a yeah. 526 or mm -hmm. whatever. Right. Because the base flood elevation downtown on all the flood maps is 526, so that would give people an idea of mm -hmm. when the bank tells them they have to have flood insurance, <laughs> they can go look at the pole right. and see. <laughs> And see why. Right, what they're talking about. I think you know from the beginning we were talking about that and how we were going to get the marks on the pole. But so how so you could actually do a little band, a thin black band mm -hmm. that's subtle, but 
from the bridge just looking at the side of the pole. The signs will be looking at it from both sides crossing the bridge, but from from the bridge looking right straight out at the pole, you could have just like a 526 or yeah. every, every foot two or feet or every foot right or whatever. Yeah. It could be, you know, it's simple to etch that in. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, 526 in red would be great, and then the other marks yeah. in black. Yeah. But I'm not sure if that would be obscured by the rail. Uh, well, just well, looking well. over the rail. 526 would be right near the top of the rail, it looks like, because 525 right. is below it. So you would almost be about waist level. It would almost be nice if the bottom of this sign was at 526. <laughs> uh, Seems like it could be really close. Uh, it, it looks like it will be, yeah. It'll be just a little bit, it'll be higher than that. Um, doesn't have the uh, elevation of. Was 520? Five five, it, it will be around 526, the base of this. This is 18 inches high, so right. 527 where it would be sort of right in the was middle. Was 525 there. Irene, or was that the May flood in 11? 525 was, uh, one of the that, that was it in, uh, we had one in March. Of 93. Uh, oh, nine, 90, March of 92. That was the, uh, that was the ice chip oh, okay. flood, 525. Yep. I just think that would be actually a really interesting reference for a lot of people that they're dealing with flooding and to be able to say that's where 526 is. Right, to see where the numbers are. Mm -hmm. Well, um, what's magic about 526? Everything that gets put in the 526. They call it the base flood elevation that's a hundred year okay. flood level. I should know that. Yep. Yeah. Did you guys developed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was the other guys. <laughs> the other guys. <laughs> Who aren't here <laughs> or retired. Right. Actually, under the new regs, it has to be two feet above 526. Okay. <laughs> Could be a changing target, apparently. So. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's not that it has to be two feet above right. BFE. Uh, two feet above BFE. Mm-hmm. Well, BFE. Reference point to BFE. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Audra. I know those terms, but that's about it. That was federally established. Yeah. Think about did that back in well before ninety four, but there were some updates. Yeah. Well, after the ninety three tried one of the proposals they came up was to raise the whole downtown eight feet. Did that in Chicago? Yeah, a long time ago. They changed the direction of the river, too. <laughs> so. Any other comments, questions, suggestions of any kind? We can go through the criteria for this. Again, number one, preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style. I wouldn't call this an historic style, so not, not applicable out. here. Harmony of exterior design, whether the properties in the district. Well, it's certainly a standalone, but it's acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, non proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Uh, location and appearance of all utilities, we'll call this a utility. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, not applicable. And again, we just said that the only thing that we, the only adjustment was that the standoffs, instead of being uh, pressure treated, would be either stainless or aluminum material if standoffs are needed. Yep. All in, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor of the application, raise your hand. I want to get you to sign that in the lower left above my name. Do you have a pen? Just throw it back. <laughs> yeah. Just may I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, so, 
if we did make little tweaks that aren't really on here, like you know, painting the, how, how much of that has to be approved by you versus the? I can just add plan? that. Picture of the bracket and the full size of the location picture, and I'll just add those to the file. Not the yes, that yes, one. Yes, that's sure, sure. Sure. Like, oh, Awesome. Thank you. Do you want me to leave this full size? Room? I've got the full size in the application sure. file. It was just we didn't make copies for everybody. Sure. That. We can't easily make copies that size. I was telling Jamie we were going to bring in the full size pole, but he <laughs> said that maybe that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> I think it's a very cool thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Great. Do we also yeah. want to add on here sure. that basement's still around? I don't think there are a lot of exterior flood markers square. downtown. There's a one in the bank. Okay. It's because the, the plan says square. And there's okay. one in front of the state house. I remember that. Yeah. With granite pillars that are right by the walkway there. Right, but there are not a lot of external. There are There's no. one uh, across the river at, at the Chevron station, I believe. Okay. Uh, first gas station on the right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or it might be inside the building. I think it's outside. The current mobile station? No. The one before that. I think it's Chevron. Oh, oh yeah. The little one. The little one, yeah. First one when you make a left. We have some markers down in the basement. Here. Yeah. <laughs> So I just added that, the, again, the pole would be, it would be changed to the round aluminum pole instead of a square. Mm -hmm. And then I just said slender elevation lines may be added to the pole with small lettering indicating elevation heights above sea level. Great. And then, again, that's an option. Mm -hmm. Any other clarification you'd like? You know, one thing that occurs to me looking at this, which we put in as an option, but we didn't get feedback from you, uh, that mm -hmm. we're going to have four of these elevation signs are four inches by ten inches. They're showing their locations here at the different major flood elevations. Okay. But we put in uh, optional either white with black letters or USGS green with white mm -hmm. letters that would look like a street sign. And do you That's have any? Either one. E either one is fine. Okay. All right. I, we, I didn't. If you want to do a mock-up of both and look, look and see which is more readable, my guess is the dark green with a white is more readable because of the contrast, but right. you have the option of doing either. A line, if you have a four inch sign, are you going to put a line where the level actually is? Yeah, you can see that uh, just on that mock up. Here, yeah, okay. Okay. That, there's a line that goes right through the middle. Okay, yeah, cool. So that line will be right at, the, at that elevation yeah. Of, yeah. of the number, whatever the it is. The SGS will get that exact. <laughs> <laughs> they will, yes, they will. <laughs> We're going to we'll survey it. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Now, so what's like, the waves? Yeah. Yes, you do like no, the waves. Yes, like yeah. you do like the, little, the water line. Yeah. yeah. Whichever you feel is more readable. <coughs> okay. So it's, so it's the combination, the green of the water waves. Yeah, I think you could look at the green one and not realize that it has anything to do with the flood. Like you could walk by. Somebody's license plate. Yeah. Somebody's license plate. Yeah. 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 Somebody's yeah. You're right. Yeah. Right. Right. License plate there. But, uh, <laughs> right. The blue waves really the blue indicate wave on the on the black and white yeah. indicate that it's a water issue. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, otherwise, people think it's an address for some place. <laughs> well, correct. Yes. <laughs> could be white waves. Two twenty-seven yeah. Langdon <laughs> Street. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah we don't want to confuse people. Good, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Good luck with your project. All right. When when do you plan on construction? Yeah. What about this summer? Summer. Yeah. Before Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Where the river refreezes. Where the river refreezes. The next application is for 27 Court Street for Ted Fetter and his uh, duly representative. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Hello, everybody. Do you need a copy? Theo's not here. Yeah, do you need yes. a copy of this? Oh, I would, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
and the first question is, are you able to use all five vacuums at once? It's quite a vacuum, I know, right? <laughs> so Dan, are you like 100% certain that these are original openings? I'm as certain as, there's no, I'm as certain as I can be. There's, the exterior does not present evidence of that, but the interior framing has it written all over it. And is the, is the wood different as well? The wood the infill? I mean, if it, were, if it oh. was there before, they must have infilled it. So. Gotcha. Yeah, and you know, the 4x4 four four that's like, that we can see that, you know, it's the framing's not necessarily, like, it's not, some of it is not obviously different. Like, that 4x4 that four four that's in kind of in the middle of that window span looks a heck of a lot like some other 4x4s four four nearby. Any nail marks and anything that indicates that that was actually built is something they changed in the process. Oh. Um, oh, nail marks to show them having put the window in there. Yeah, yeah. There would be there would be some evidence that they actually put the window in, rather than saying, "Oh, I just rather have one window up there, even after it's framed." I right. Know. I hear you. Um, no, I, I'm. I'm not. I don't know exactly what evidence I would expect to see there. I mean, there there might have been, you know, the framed opening. There would have been a wooden jam, and wood jam wouldn't have been applied. But you know, no, that's because, been removed. The, the, the difficulty I see is the is the trim on the outside. Mm -hmm. the, it, it, the, the, with those two windows over there, it, it, the drawings show it anyway. Just uh, you know, running out into the corners. Into the freeze board, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Are the two windows on the back on the top floor a little smaller than the ones that you're um, planning to put in the front? They are not. They're the same. They're large, the same size. They are. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They don't seem to. Okay. The trim. I see the that diagonal trim doesn't doesn't appear on the back. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. <coughs> yeah. The back just the back exterior trim is just so been if you were to, along the way. Dad, if you were to pull some clapboards on the front on the gable end, mm -hmm. off, mm -hmm. do a little exploratory. Um, where you could actually see potentially if there was any sort of trim, any, any fade, any sort of stain. <laughs> the sheet where water might have. Sure. You know what I, mean? I do. Mm -hmm. Is that possible to? It's possible. I mean, it's it's you know it requires setting up staging, and you know it's not it's not a quick and easy thing. It's up on the third floor. There's a porch. You know, below it, and it requires us to get up there safely. So it's something that can be done, like super easy, if it was on the ground level. Right. Um, but you're having to get up there anyway. Right? I mean, we're only going to set up staging if we're if, you're if we're permitted it. to yeah. do the to do the change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting framing job that they did. It is indeed. Is the the picture on the back? This is the back of the. That it is. That's, that's correct. Yeah. And that actually looks framed similarly on the sides of each of those windows, as it does on the does front, front cable. Front. I agree with that. <coughs> See the way this is framed. Yeah. It's a heavier on the sides. Yeah, so it's four by four. On Instead of a uh, stud and a jack, they just do a solid four by. How, how does it four by four on either side? Yes, it is. How, how do they deal with the freeze board in the back? It's covered under asphalt shingles and layers and layers of stuff. Probably it could even be notched down. In order, in order to Rather than create the exact, what if these two windows could be moved close together to be the equivalent spacing of the two down below it and to the left as you're looking at the front of the building? Yeah, if you, just, if you, if you uh, yeah, if you pair them up, see if you change. move if you move those together uh -huh. and kept the spacing uh -huh. between them. Yeah. As is the two below it and to the left, slightly to the left. Would that 
uh -huh. that, that allow you to clear the freeze boards. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if, I think you're looking at the spacing here yes. and, and replicating that spacing I'm just, here. I'm looking at it on the diagram here. Uh -huh. The spacing gotcha. is smaller than the width of the window yeah. and trim above it. I, I mean, Theo would be pleased to have two windows in there, and I don't think anyone's wedded to, you know, how far apart they are <coughs> or are not necessarily. Um, and so if, if squeezing them together with, you know, instead of, I don't know, you know, instead of whatever it was, maybe it was two feet or something like that, if, if, if making 12 inches in between them kept it away from the freeze board to clean up the trim detail, there would be no pushback from this side of the table. So, so how much float area do we want between the trim, the window trim and the freeze? I would, just, I would maximize it, but just bring it down so the window trim getting into the freeze board. Quick question, in the, in the, a couple inches, in the back of yeah. the building, are the windows the same height on the, that floor as the one below it? Oh. Um, in other words, in, in that one, is, is the height of the window yeah. the same as it is? I believe so, Steve, although I don't know that I paid real close attention because we've replaced, we've, res we've resized those windows. Mm -hmm for egress purposes on that back side of the building for our original permit. Okay. So you made them um, taller or? They are taller and wider so that we could, because um, that one of those windows is a bedroom. Okay. Um, What's, but what was the size they were before? How no, much on the, smaller on the back? The, oh, on the back, I I don't know for sure. I, I, could, I could guess, but I don't know that it's 100% great information. You know, that 32 by 60 number is a classic nuclear size double hung window. Yep. Um, and um, that's what we're proposing to use on the front of the building. And all of the, actually, no, I can't. All of the windows, I'm, I'm picturing the replacement window order in my head right now. And they're all like, all the double hungs are those, third, you know, plus or minus that 32 by 60 number. Yep. But because those two rear windows were going to be new windows, I. I I just don't know off the top of my head what those were. Okay. Mm -hmm. and you, you, there's no historic photographs that you found for the front of the building. No, no. Theo looked, you know, all over the place and did not, did not find anything. Yeah, I, I would be surprised if you could find one really. Back to Seth's sort of like and we, we have a question. building that is actually built in 1840. Is there any way that, like, I can't see in this photograph, but presumably the sheet the location of two would continue like through. Uh -huh. the side. Like, like you would be able to read the Thank you for pointing that out. The they, they are not continuous. They are not continuous. In 75, they were covered over on the outside. So that's what would indicate to me that there were windows there. You're absolutely right. Put it in. Yeah. Yeah. Taller than this one. Sills are notched, you know. Mm -hmm. Taller than this one that winter now. Yeah, See, this, this comes down below this. What's that? Yeah. Basically, yeah. it's yeah. pretty yeah. excited about it. Yeah. Lowered this window. You're going to take away the vent compared to these other. Two. Oh, above? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Steve, um, it was just brought, it was, I was just reminded of the fact that the sheathing. The, the joints and the horizontal joints in the sheathing do not align with yes. like the sheathing that's outboard of the mm -hmm. of the windows, mm -hmm. which which pretty clearly indicates that that wasn't infill. I just I, I, I the possibility that those windows were never put in because just the existing windows has lower cells and headers mm -hmm. than the window that's there. Mm -hmm. Agreed. People do make mistakes in drawings and things. And buildings. And buildings. <laughs> Back in the day, they made mistakes. More. It's not <laughs> awesome. I think if, it, if you go with two, definitely need to give it some breathing room from the freeze board because otherwise it's this real tenuous you know, visual kind of. Agreed. Kind of I've been spying one on Main Street. Um, I thought to take a picture, but never actually made it happen. But there's one, you know, it's not, it wouldn't be the only building with that. There's one on Main Street, kind of maybe um, next to Zallinger, Lambeck, something, something, something. Um, closer to the roundabout, there's one with some window trim, not unlike the situation that, that we're talking about here. 
but agreed if we could keep it away I think that that would be desirable um, and and you know and Theo would be happy to close those close those up if you guys want to kind of dictate you know what you know and we can even size the windows these don't need to be egress windows necessarily mm -hmm. we, we were thinking that they could be that 30 by 60 or 32 by 60 window to be consistent in size with the rest of the double hungs on the facade or at least on the second floor of that building um, and many of the other double hungs but if they wanted to be slightly diminutive um, which maybe would be reasonable given the third yeah. floor space maybe six or something of a 60 height uh-huh yeah, yeah, yeah. or, yeah. or you, you could actually cheat the the, the sill down no, and you drop the head to drop yeah, it bring it down, down to the, the level of uh, to drop the, the sill down a couple of inches and go to a 56 instead of a 60 and then yeah. that would give, give you the the two with an equivalent spread between the two windows yeah. below it Other and first. still give you a few inches clearance between the freeze board and the casing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so Marvin windows come in increments of four inches in height and two inches in width. You know, so if we're decreasing four inches in height, should we keep things proportional and decrease the width as well? So 30 by a 56? I thought Marvin you could order any size. Um, am I out of date on that? I don't that? think they do. I know they have their standards, but I think you can, mm -hmm. you can, uh, go, you can go to anything, but you save some money if you go within their parameters of their. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're right. I'm thinking of integrities. I'm thinking of integrities. Um, so yes, you're right. You can, they can be anything, but I guess so. Disregarding what is or is not in stock, the proportion, the the, the rate, you know, proportion of the window is still probably in question, right? Um, so if we were to kind of decrease the window proportionally to keep that kind of roughly one to two width to height proportion so that we just kind of kept away from the freeze board and also maybe snuck the windows in closer to, to each other that would be okay mm -hmm. this vent so shrink it down to what uh, that's going, yeah that's 30 by 32 by 60 uh, coming up to either a, what a 28 or a 30 by 56 whatever it yeah whatever it needs to be Just out of curiosity, the front door. What what came of that? We're going to build a new. You're going to build. build a new door to replicate okay. the existing door. And who's the guy you're having do it? Scott. This guy. Oh yeah. Scott. <laughs> also <laughs> me. <Yeah>. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do that in house. And mahogany or? Um, we haven't we haven't uh, sussed that detail out yet. Mm -hmm. Probably not mahogany. It'll be a nice door. Mm -hmm. It'll be a very nice door. People have been using Spanish cedar. Yeah, we've been using that too That's a little a bit. Durable. Yeah. yeah. Wood. For sure. I don't know if it really comes from Spain or not. They cut a lot of trees down in Spain. Dumpster loads you take on it? Many. Um, seven, maybe? Well, oh, there's stuff going. Mm -hmm. The building breathed a giant sigh of relief. Yeah, that. Are you uh, spray foaming solid from eaves all the way up? We are. Is, is this space going to remain sort of cathedral no, or is it? No. 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 no that floor system came out and it was yeah. like so tempting to want yeah. to think about that, but yeah. the, build, the project, the, you know, can't yeah. afford that. Yeah. Maybe the three units. Mm -hmm. Too bad. I know. It's beautiful. <laughs> I know. This is a pretty old frame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's you know, one of those transitional <coughs> between heavy timber and, and stick built. No, it's it's all, it's all you know. Those four by four, the walls are let into the plates, and it isn't the the the, the structure structure part of it is is a is a timber frame through and through. So it's it's pegged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, uh, is it? Uh, did you happen to notice whether the timbers are circular on or 
up and down sign or they're hewn the timbers are hewn yeah. I bet that house is older than yeah. people think it is mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'll take spray foam. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 You find anything cool? Tons of stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> Walls were jam packed full of newspapers and receipts and ice skates and yeah. all sorts of interesting things. <laughs> whiskey <laughs> bottles. I don't think we saw any whiskey bottles, but lots of receipts, <laughs> coal receipts, and and you know. All sorts of interesting paperwork. We found bags of nails with the receipt uh, from Peck Brothers Hardware back mm. in the 20s and 30s in one of the buildings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I try mm -hmm. to stop stuff in the walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then a guy, guy spent half a day looking for the bag of nails he closed <laughs> up in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one house uh, we, we moved, removed thresholds that were worn out and we removed them. We found two Indian head pennies under each mm. doorway. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Huh? Nice. So what we said, if this sounds agreeable, yeah. uh, window size for the upper floor, south-facing windows, may be reduced from 32 by 60 <coughs> size to between 28 and 30 by 56. The sill height may be dropped 2 to 3 inches so that the double window installation will maintain spacing between them to closely match the windows below to the left, and the upper window casings will clear the freeze board to maintain architectural detail. Mm -hmm. Can I would like you to add is that that change is based on evidence found in the structure. We don't want to just sort of yep. say this is freestyle. You know, I mean, we're not doing exactly what it is, but there's evidence of, mm -hmm. of can windows. We, can we also... Um, would it also make sense to add in there that the spacing in between the windows, although the target would be to be consistent with the spacing on the second floor windows, that if it means clearing the freeze board, that we can sh that we yeah. can squeeze those together? I just said closely approximating, yeah. so you don't have to match okay. it. Uh, so if you were okay. going to answer yeah. to just so it comes together yeah. enough that you know the window trim clears the freeze board. Okay. I mean, you know, not enough so it looks independent. Mm -hmm. Meredith's going to get up on your stage and you can measure it. <laughs> no. No? Okay. No. But I, I kind of want to start taking some guys down. Mm. Yeah. Are, are, are you working there fairly regularly? Or? Mm -hmm. I just like to stop in and look at the framing. Because mm -hmm. I, I would not suspect to find framing like that until. 1850, 1860. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be, it could be even earlier than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity. We had pictures of one building that we have that had from 1875, and when we stripped the interior, we found windows, clear window framing that didn't show in 1875, but the building was built in the 1840s. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. A lot of the changes have happened. Okay. So what I did was I just added historic evidence of pre-existing window framing for the upper floor allows yeah. the following. Yeah. And we'll go through the criteria. Preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style acceptable based on that evidence. Harmony of exterior design with acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping and proposed here. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or materials acceptable. No change in utilities. Recognition of and respect for view quarters, significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house acceptable. Based on those changes, all in favor? Raise your hand. Okay. As always, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Get you John Henry on this. That's okay. Okay. Oh, I'll leave this pen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, again, thank you. Thank you.
No, just next application. Next application for 22 okay. State Street. Carlo. Aye. Well, that's my understanding. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. You guys took me out of my shift, my pizza shift, so I'm happy for that. <laughs> <laughs> So are there any changes, or this is the same one going back? Same one. Okay. I mean, each year we touch it up. We just re-oil the, the wood and repaint the floor and, and throw it out there. Just touch it up. Get the fingerprints off it. Yep. Yeah. But nothing's changed. Makes it This gives them for another two years. Cool. So your biannual renewal. <laughs> so it's been two years since the last time. Seems like yesterday. It flies. But. Questions, comments, suggestions? Motion to approve. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Actually, I should read down this quickly. Preservation and construction of the appropriate historic style is probably not applicable <coughs> to a parklet. Harmony of exterior design, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed materials, acceptable. Uh, landscaping, the plantings are acceptable. Uh, prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, and no change in lighting or anything out there. And recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor? Yeah. Just why don't you just put down this renewal or something pre approved? Okay. Just, yeah. So that's clear. Yeah, why not? Somebody probably figured that out from the record. Always nice to have the record clear. Mm -hmm. not, not always, but generally, yeah. Okay. Speaking as the zoning administrator, the one who figures stuff out, it's always nice for me to have the record clear. I just said renewal of a previous approval from two years ago. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Raise your hand. Sign that on the lower left above right my here. name. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thank you, guys. Good Thank to you. go. Take care. Thank you. Have a good night. Yes. And last application for 58 State Street over Lake Park. I'm accusing myself of coming over to the other <laughs> side. <laughs> So I'm Dan Kelly, tenant of the 58th Street Street building, the garage building. Uh, one of the requirements to utilize the front door as a customer entrance uh, has been to create a barrier. Uh, if it's high enough that we've got to create a barrier so people can't fall off of the ramp, uh, as well as hand railings uh, per Chris Lumber, the building inspector. And so we spoke with Ben to come up with designs and to build it, and this is what he has come up with. And I'll hand off to you from there, sir. Yeah, so one goal is to preserve, there's these um, guardrails, maybe, whatever you want to call those pipes. Bumpers. Running, bumpers. <laughs> uh, the idea was to try and keep those there just because they kind of have some historical significance, and so we're going to put the uh, guardrails on the outside of those concrete retaining walls, and they're all to be um, uh, steel that we're actually going to leave raw it'll rust over time and kind of blend into the same sort of like historic look of what's going on on that building but they're much like the asiana sort of railings next door except everything is scaled up so it has a, a thicker stronger kind of heavier look to it that uh goes across that uh, the outside of those ramps um, and then the handrail we had kind of justified it to one side to be able to allow for sort of art objects or weird things to go on that ramp, but still create a, a clear, easy walkway that goes up and down there. Um, 
it is. You're not actually going to run vehicles up that ramp, are you? you know, maybe offload cattle. <laughs> uh, well, I can see back in a moving truck in if you're doing the office. Yeah, no, there wouldn't. It wouldn't be. It's, it's a pedestrian entrance, uh, and it will be limited to the left-hand side as you look yeah. at the lower left-hand drawing there. That um, for people to go in and out of that one door. Get a is that like a four-inch kick there, or what? Yes. So there's nothing. Um, it's an asphalt ramp. It's not. Um, it's not concrete. Right. So, one of the challenges is how do we mount this handrail <laughs> to the asphalt? Mm -hmm. And so, plan is to kind of drill and core and put in some sauna tubes down into that. And that is two angle irons back to back that allow me to bolt into that mm -hmm. concrete and give that railing some mass and stability down low. Um, and Chris is cool. With that. Chris seems cool with that. You can put you can put a lot of bolts in, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and so anchors in it. It what also allows me to do is just kind of drill to put in concrete in a line. I have no idea what I'm going to hit in there, and you know, I imagine they filled it with. Is it what's under what's underneath the ramp? Dirt stuff. <laughs> Dirt. Con concrete blocks, granite. I have no clue what's underneath. Who knows how much concrete was filtered through? Just create. What's under the asphalt that's there? Don't know. I have no idea. I asked Jesse. Jesse had no idea. Um, I mean, it's been there a long time, and it is. I was. Today was the first day I could kind of see it without a whole lot of like fully covered in ice. It's flatter than I expected. I'm not saying it's flat, but it is flatter than I expected. It'll be soon enough when you cord it. Yeah. That used to be the Ford garage. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it was Walker that had it. I think he built the one. Oh, but it used to be the Ford garage. Hmm. So, what are you capping the rail to? Uh, that's a PC channel that. Um, the guardrail has a piece of upside down C channel that caps all those posts. So. How, are you, how are you terminating it? At the end? Uh, I was going to cut it flush with the last post and it would get welded from underneath. And then the same, should have given you a little bit closer detail, same would be a, a smaller scale C channel caps the posts that hold the um, handrails. They're not going to blow away for sure. <coughs> that's out of steel. Right, that's the goal. The attachment to the outside base of concrete. Wedge anchors. Two five eighths, kind of good size wedge anchors, through a pair of um, pieces of angle back to back, and then the posts would be bolted mm -hmm. um, yeah. to that. Yeah. I'm surprised Chris lets you put the horizontal. It's allowed. Uh, rails. It's, it's allowed. Now, yeah. Because uh, it's a ladder, basically. If somebody wants to climb up there, they can do it easily. Limitation there was too architecturally. We looked at that, but it really wouldn't look very nice in terms of fitting in historically or architecturally. Right. I mean, I'm, this is fine, but I think you know that I'm just surprised that because I've run into other cases where they wouldn't let building inspector wouldn't let you do that. Just having a ladder. For for kids, I've heard that argument, but it's yeah. it's it's allowed. Well, as soon as they turn on the electric, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, electric fence there will work like a charm. <laughs> Slow them right down. Yeah, one solution somebody came up with is just putting some, uh, some really open wire mesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which would be fairly easy to do. I don't know if he doesn't want to do it. Not, not our deal. I don't think it's required. Is it a black metal, or is it just a natural metal steel finish? I mean, it'll look black for the first year and a half, and yeah. then it'll begin to look more brown. Is that the Cortan steel? No. No, just uh, mild just steel. Just mild steel. Weathering steel? No. no. Same as basically what these pipes are that, that exist there. It just won't paint. Right. Well, those pipes weren't painted either. They're oh, really? Of those pipes that exist, they're just steel. So, what's the space used for that? 
first floor will be a veterinary surgical center, and then the second floor will be sort of an event space, or I guess it's going to be called the, the garage cultural center for art exhibits, for pop-ups, for cooking demonstrations, classes, um, that sort of thing. Sort of evolved into that, sort of an odd mix, I realize. Uh, there aren't too many projects that combine the two, but my wife is, you know, into the art scene and, and you know, those people, and so it was a good mix. We didn't need the whole building, but Jesse was pretty adamant that he wanted to do it as a package deal. So this is what we evolved into. It's going to be beautiful cool. space upstairs for event space. It's unbelievably amount of interest that she has had. I mean, she is responding to 15, 20 calls a day, and I'm not exaggerating, calls and emails a day of people interested in using the space. It's dwarfs the veterinary hospital, trust me. I mean, that's <laughs> becoming the, it's going to hopefully pay the bills a little better, but, <laughs> uh, but it doesn't have the level of interest that she does. So That's interesting. Get to that up Stairs. And an elevator. Yeah, we did put an elevator in. Like a Lula elevator. Yeah. So I'm some sorry, of these details are matching. Was that a full-size elevator? No. Well, Lula is limited use, limited application. Okay. So it's kind of a mini. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not a, a lift. I mean, it's yeah. a regular, it doesn't look a lot different than a normal elevator. It just doesn't have the capacity or the speed of a regular elevator. Mm -hmm. So, and it can't go, you know, it'll go three floors. I think you can get those to go or something. Is that a three-stop? It'll go from the basement level to the first floor and then to the second nope, floor? No, it won't go to the basement. Oh, um, that okay. we had to build a huge cement foundation down there, uh, both from flood and for the thing coming down has okay. got to be have concussive. Was it hydraulic? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are many different varieties. Yeah. Of the, uh, and I know you had a question a while ago regarding dog waste bags, to which I did ask Jody, <laughs> and she did indicate that they were going to be on the building, but not necessarily right here on the ramp. That's I think, okay. yeah. I, would, I said that teasingly, but. <laughs> well, it was, it's a. Yeah. No, it's a reasonable a rail, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> going to probably increase the dog population in the area. I don't know if it'll increase it. I mean, it's pretty pretty big now. I mean, yeah, yeah. what's strolling around town? And I haven't seen that as an issue in town. Has it ever come up as an issue? I mean, I don't see waste around with the number of dogs that I see. People seem pretty good. Oh, yeah. It's Is there? Happened. It's happened. Yeah. I've cleaned up a few myself. <laughs> it's not like San Francisco, but... Okay. Institute DNA testing for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They do do that. I know they do. Yeah, yeah. That's, true. You oh, do that, that. that's come up. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments, questions, no. suggestions? Okay, I'll read down through the criteria then. Preservation of reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if it's proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. Uh, the railing's acceptable. Harmony of exterior design, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, and proposed here. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. No change in utilities, any lighting changes out, outside? Is there any, is there any lighting for the ramp? It, like in the there winter? Is, the only lighting would be the existing lighting at the front door, mm -hmm. but that parking lot is lit, so I don't, okay. we're not proposing to add anything. Okay, that's fine. There may, well, there, w there may be lighting associated with sign, but that goes, my understanding is that's a separate process. Sign, yeah. yes, okay. So none with this application. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, <coughs> including way, gateway views of the city and state house. Acceptable. All in favor of the application, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you don't count, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And you can sign that right above my name in the lower left there. I okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good luck with the project. Thanks. Yeah. And has everybody had a chance to take a look at the minutes? I was near so I don't get to vote. <coughs> there are 
no changes. Basically, the only one we had was the College Street right. applicant. Looks Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? No, not the agenda. Approve the minutes. and am going backwards. Second? A second. All in favor of the minutes for March 18th, raise your hand. Four. And unless anybody has anything else to add, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. I second. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Meeting is adjourned.